Welcome. In this video, I would like to talk about the algorithmic differentiation, or also called automatic differentiation, using the so-called forward mode. In order to discuss that, I would like to discuss it as a very practical example. A cost function L of W, which has basically two outputs, so that's why we denote it here as a vectorial output. The outputs are of order P, so two times. And we have also Q inputs, which is W, and here specifically W1 and W2. So Q would be 2 in this example, and P would be also 2 in this example. And I would like to discuss how we can actually get the Jacobian of that um, function, which would be, of course, then uh, the, uh, would also cover the gradient, and potentially then also the second order derivatives could be extended naturally. How do we do that with the forward mode automatic differentiation? First, we need to represent this cost function in a so-called erected acyclic graph or short DAG. So basically, a computational representation of this mathematical representation and acycling means basically just going into one direction without any loops. If we do that, as inputs to this graph, we basically define our parameters here, which are w1 and w2. And as we can see, w1 times w2 is an intermediate example or an intermediate result of both uh, elements of our vectorial output here. So we can define an intermediate quantity based on the multiplication, so that should be a multiplication sign, which we call v1, so that would be our v1 times, uh, w1 times w2. And then from this intermediate solution we get basically two outputs of our graph, which is the log and the E function of this argument. And this would then define, let's call it V2, which would be our first output, and V3 as the next element of our computing graph, which would be our second output, right? So this DAC, so this directed isocyclic graph, would be a graphical but also a computational representation of the mathematical representation of this cost function. And what we do in the automatic differentiation rule is basically we utilize this representation of a graph and just apply the chain rule in order to calculate the Jacobian and then, as I said, as part of that, the derivative of, furthermore, the Hessian information. And in the forward mode, we will apply the chain rule in this forward direction. So if I con consider any intermediate result into this direction, so going from left to right, so the partial derivative of vi with respect to any parameter w, so w could be here w1, w2, w3, or any other parameter, we can rewrite this as the partial derivative of vi with respect to vi minus 1 times partial derivative of vi minus 1 with respect to w, right? So we didn't change the equation by that, and we can extend that scheme forward through this DAC uh, accordingly and basically derive a rule how we can calculate the partial derivatives of the different substages until we eventually reach the final output stage, such that we can calculate also then uh, the partial derivative of the output with respect to the input. And based on this chain rule in this forward mode, we can derive uh, also a rule for the stack, uh, let's say a graphical rule, which says that the partial derivative of vi with respect to w is also identical to the sum of j being the pre 
predecessors of i of the partial derivative of vi divided by vj. So g would be the predecessors times partial derivative of vj divided by partial w. And this is called the so-called forward mode tangent, right? So these would be the partial derivatives in this forward mode. Let's make that very specific and in order to calculate the tangent and then also eventually via the chain rule, the um, partial derivatives of the output with respect to the inputs, we need to first calculate the so-called primals. What are the primals? So the primals are basically just the absolute values for W1, W2, V1, and so on for a specific example. And in this example, I would like to utilize the example V1 being 1 and V2 being 2, uh, W2. So W1 would be 1 and W2 would be 2. If I then calculate this graph forward, it's obvious, obvious that W1 times W2 for V1 is obviously also a 2. So V1 as an intermediate stage is 2. And then 2 here in the logarithmic function and in the E function then results in V2 being equal to 0.3 and finally V3 is equal to 7.4. So this would be the primals. So the actual result of our inputs, intermediate results, and the outputs of our graph if we put in a specific evaluation point. So in this case, 1, 2, for which I would like to calculate the Jacobian matrix. And now what we do is we apply this tangent rule for uh, this primal operating point, so one and two, and from there build the Jacobian matrix. So next are the tangents. So for the tangents, first what we need to do is we will need to define a so-called seed. So, and that seed is defined as the partial derivative of W1 with respect to W1 is one and the partial derivative of W1 with respect to W2 is zero. So what does that mean? It's basically that we consider, so maybe I make that here as a purple one, that we will consider first the derivative of V1 with respect to the outputs, and not of V2, right? So we will consider the impact of V1 on the output derivatives and not of V2. That is called the seed. That will be our first seed. And later we will also have a second seed, which is then basically the opposite that we will consider the impact of W2 on the derivatives within the graph. Okay, so that is our seeding, our entry point on how to calculate the tangent here via the chain rule. And now what we do is we will just apply this chain rule forward. So with that seeding, our next element would be of course V1. So partial derivative of V1 with respect to W1. And that would be then, if we consider this approach, of course the partial derivative of W1 times W2, which would be VI, so which is this V1, with respect to W1 times partial derivative of W1 with respect to W1, and then that would be basically the first impact here, and then we need to calculate the second impact also there, which would be then again partial derivative of W1 times W2 with respect to W1 plus, or not plus, times 
W2 divided by W1 as partial derivatives. That here, of course, is again zero with the seeding, so this entire impression remains zero, and what we get from that is obviously a one, and this is then a partial derivative of W1 times W2 with respect to W2, uh, with respect to W1 is then W2, so what we get from that is that is in zero, that is one times W2, and that results then in, yeah, let's put it here, in just two. So the tangent, so the partial derivative of V1 with respect to W1 as an intermediate result here in this example would be two. And then as the next step, we need to apply the chain rule, of course, with respect to the two outputs. So that would be then partial derivative of V2 with respect to W1. And then again, we apply the chain rule, which is then the partial derivative of log of V1 with respect to V1 times, now looking again, what are the predecessors? And the predecessor, of course, is here V1. So we calculate the partial derivative of W1 times W2, which is identical to V1 with respect to W1, which is here. And as we only have one predecessor, right, if we're looking from this side, there's only one predecessor in terms of V2, which is identical to this third output, and this is V1, so that's why we do not need any other equations here. And if we calculate the mass here, what we get is, is one over V1 times V2. So V1, we have calculated that as a primal is two, and W2 in this example as our primal is also two, so that is one over two times two, and that is then obviously one. We can also do the same for the uh, third um, V3, so for the second output. I just give you here the example or the result due to um, space requirements, and that would be then the partial derivative of V3 with respect to W1, and that is after a couple of intermediate steps following the same approach here, uh, exactly 14.8. So these would be then the partial derivatives being 1 and 14.8 with respect to that first seeding. And if we calculate or if we map that into the Jacobian matrix, so let's put the Jacobian matrix maybe, let's say here, L j of l, that would be then of course the partial derivative of the first output of l with respect to w1, and then the first output of l1 with respect to w2, and so on. So second output with respect to w1, and second output of l with respect to w2. Two. And what we have just calculated with that first seed, where we set basically uh, W1 with W2 to zero, is uh, basically this column, right? So with this first seeding, we have calculated this first column of the Jacobian matrix. So we have evaluated the impact of W1 with respect to the two outputs, okay? And what we would now do to also get the second column is basically to, I will just sketch the approach here, do a new seeding, which is W1 with respect to W2, that we consider that as a zero, and W2 with respect to W2 would be one. So in this case, that would be the opposite seeding. So we start here with a zero derivative and here with a one derivative. So that means that in this seeding, so that would be the seeding two, which would give us this column. We would now calculate the impact of W2 on the two outputs, okay? 
And then we would also follow again the same rule. So we would now calculate the derivative of V2. I can just give you the uh, results as an intermediate um, calculation if you want to do that for your own. So the partial derivative of V1 with respect to W2 would be actually one. And then partial derivative of V2 with respect to W2 would be identical to 0.5. And last but not least, partial derivative of V3 with respect to W2 is identical to 7.4. So that would be then 0.5 and 7.4. Okay, so with that, different seeding, we would calculate the partial derivatives of the output with respect to W2. So what have we seen with this forward mode automatic differentiation is that per forward pass, we are able to evaluate the partial derivatives of one input parameter to all outputs at once. So therefore, the pro argument for the forward mode automatic differentiation is that it's very efficient if we have many outputs p but only a few inputs q. So if p is larger than q. Because then we would only have to do a couple of forward passes and get already all output uh, sensitivities. However, in optimization and also machine learning, exactly the opposite applies, right? So there we normally have a scalar output, our cost function, and we have many, many, many input parameters which we would like to optimize. So that would be actually exactly the opposite. So therefore, this forward mode is normally not uh, perfectly well suitable for machine learning applications or any kind of optimization. However, another advantage is that it is also accurate because by applying the chain rule and applying the calculations rules based on this directed acyclic graph, we basically do not do any approximation. So we also get the nice property of an accurate information regarding derivatives like here in the Jacobian or then for the optimization approaches with the gradients and with the Hessian, such that the derivatives are exact with respect to the computational uh, accuracy of numerics. And the con argument is, of course, that it's not really applicable for machine learning problems. So ML problems are normally exactly the opposite. So Q is much larger than P because P, our output space, is normally just a scalar because we have a scalar cost function. So therefore, automatic differentiation using the forward mode is already going into the right direction. We have a very accurate determination of our partial derivatives for the Jacobian, uh, for the um, gradient, and for the Hessian. However, it is actually applicable to problems with many outputs and just a few inputs. And therefore, in the next video, we will utilize uh, alternative uh, automatic differentiation technique, which is in the backward mode, in order to apply a similar uh, approach to the chain rule, not from the front to the back, but vice versa, in order to get an automatic algor algorithmic rule, which is also well applicable for machine learning problems. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video.